Good morning and welcome to this, the 129th virtual bridge session. And we're very pleased to have with us Antoine Rivoire, an educational technologist with Ulster University. And it's a subject which is of great interest, and that is thinking again about assessment and how it fits in uh, with the changes that are happening in terms of digital in education. Over to you, Antoine. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's uh, my pleasure to be here and we already have had some uh, uh, great discussions. Um, so my name is Antoine Rivoire and I'm an educational technologist at the Office for Digital Learning at Ulster University. And uh, what I am going to discuss uh, with you or uh, uh, present to you today are some uh, emerging methods of assessment uh, which um, hopefully support the, uh, the move towards a, a different ethos of assessment, which is knowing doing being, um, whereby we want students to experience what it is to be uh, what they intend to become and document uh, what they do and uh, really uh, live in the life, uh, uh, already be what they want to become. So, um, in my mind, uh, this discussion is happening. Uh, what, what I see is that th this discussion is becoming a lot more prevalent because of the shift to remote learning and um, the, um, uh, the issue around um, assessment and especially tests and, and uh, things like that. Um, and the whole debate around proctoring and, and all, all of that, which personally completely against. Um, so a little bit of background and uh, also a little bit about what I am going to talk about. So the three things that I would like to uh, discuss and uh, show you a bit about our uh, video assessment. And uh, we are lucky to have a video platform uh, at Ulster University called Panopto, which supports uh, video assessment. And uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, OneNote um, online portfolio using Class Notebook, which is, uh, I guess, now uh, well known to all the uh, uh, educational technology circles and well established, and um, which I'm really happy about because started using the uh, Class Notebook the first year that it came out. And uh, lastly, I will talk about blogs and the blog platform that we have introduced last year at Ulster University. So um, I started at the Office of Digital Learning in 2018, just after uh, the Panopto video service was introduced. Prior to that, I was a lecturer in um, music technology and a technology enhanced learning mentor in a uh, further in higher education college and um, grew very frustrated with the methods of ass assessment, uh, both uh, because of the, uh, uh, they were so uh, prescribed and also with the technology that we had, um, I used video for assessment uh, right back from when I started and uh, the technology has come on so much uh, it's um, uh, there's great opportunities there. And uh, for a little bit more background, before that, uh, in Ulster University, there was the Digital Futures uh, Initiatives, uh, which try to imagine what uh, uh, digital learning would look like in the future, and took the steps to uh, introduce those tools. So when I started, we were in a very good position where uh, we had a lot of things already into place. Uh, plus, there was a lot of um, experience with online learning already. So uh, what I'm going to uh, present fits really well in the context of this report from JESC, which was uh, five targets for 2025, the future of assessment. And uh, really, that should be now uh, five targets for tomorrow, um, but uh, or even yesterday. Uh, but really, assessments. Uh, what this report um, 
uh, what some of one of the main findings is that assessment should be authentic, accessible, appropriately automated, continuous, and secure. So, uh, and I think the methods of assessment that I will uh, show you all really fits in those categories. Those categories. Um, so the first thing, the first one I'm going to talk to you is probably one that uh, most people by now are familiar with, and that's the uh, class notebook. And uh, so I not so much go over what the class notebook is, although if you don't know, it is um, a product by Microsoft, where Microsoft University, so all of our students have access to this, and all of our lectures have access to this. And uh, we can create those and um, uh, as we want and uh, use these uh, uh, as, as much as we want. So um, it's used in some pockets of the university. It's not something that uh, the university says everybody must use. Um, and um, uh, but uh, through creating uh, these pockets of uh, 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 of usage of the class notebook, we can see ripple effects and more and more seeing ways in which they can use that and adopt, adapt uh, the uh, examples that we uh, that we put out there. Like for example, this case study, um, um, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. So um, uh, we're not that keen on using Teams in teaching and learning. We do use it where it's appropriate, but we don't use it everywhere. We don't see it as a one size fit, uh, one solution fits all. And um, the um, we introduced the uh, uh, the portfolio to on the, the really the first. A pilot was on the postgraduate diploma with physician associates and uh, basically they had a huge problem where uh, their students do one year of placement they, in that year they do actually nine placements all over the country and uh, we all know the problems with paper portfolio and that is that um, uh, they're great but they're not good uh, they're often are presented at the very end and uh, students on the course felt like there wasn't much support uh, throughout their placements and uh, they didn't really get the uh, learning uh, opportunities during that year of placements. So um, um, what, um, uh, so we introduced this and some of the reasons are that it's available on all the platforms that you can think of. Um, it supports a wide range of files and types of media. And um, one of the great thing is that the mobile app has this uh, um, uh, scan function. So uh, I will show you some examples, but those students work in um, hospitals where they don't necessarily have network access. And uh, so we wanted something where they could continue using paper-based solutions, but blend the paper, uh, paper solutions and digital solution. So um, that fit the bill really well. Um, there's a lot of um, great features and it's quite straightforward to uh, implement. So um, we supported this to, uh, first of all, uh, uh, doing quite a lot of design uh, with the lectures and looking at how their paper uh, portfolio would translate, what we could include, what are the opportunities afford afforded by the electronic portfolio. And that includes uh, having all the material, the performers um, that the students use, uh, right there in the in the portfolio so it becomes the uh, one-stop shop if you want and um, here you can see a uh, this stage oops sorry uh, here you can see a an example of a typical placement portfolio with weekly weekly rotors which you can see on the on the left 
um, there is journal, uh, all the timesheets, the case reports. So all of that set in one place. And the good thing is it syncs pretty much instant, instant, instantaneously, which means that lecturers can give feedback throughout the placement and stay in touch with the students. So that, and that's really the biggest, um, uh, the, the most important features. Okay, so next video assessment. Let's, uh, so video assessment, uh, we already had a great discussion about this, but um, so it, through uh, the uh, Panopto platform, students can uh, create their own videos. And basically it's a little bit like YouTube where everybody has a channel and uh, can record and upload videos and share those videos. Um, so, and they can also submit through the VLE. Um, so the way we supported this is through different initiatives, so through vlogs, but also through video assessment in terms of um, to, to support that. Uh, we um, did quite a lot of uh, uh, support events in terms of webinars, and also through the development of uh, the uh, video, uh, students video guide. I play this, uh, this little uh, video to show you what it looks like. But basically what, um, um, what we wanted to achieve with this is uh, wanted to uh, give the students all of the information on uh, the technical information, but also the information on how do you uh, go about planning um, your, your video, your presentation, um, what are the aspects that you need to think about when you record the video. So it's not just um, a replacement for a uh, video, for, um, for example, a presentation in front of a class, it is a new process which supports learning and developing skills in presentation through the ability to um, really watch yourselves, watch yourself presenting, re-record your video until you're happy that that's um, uh, at the level that you want. So we also support lectures through uh, giving them a, um, uh, a, a, a better idea of how do they approach uh, evaluating a video presentation. So uh, th these are two criteria that uh, we give to lecturers and say, hey, maybe you want to introduce those in your rubric and, um, and give those to your student, that to your students as well, because that will give them a really good um, uh, idea of the, th the thing that they need to keep in mind uh, when they create their videos. So uh, that covers the presentation and creativity. So that's uh, using imagery to support the narrative. That's uh, how, um, what is the quality of the delivery, the rhythm of, and pace of speech, uh, things that they can really pick out when they watch themselves delivering a, a presentation, but they can't pick out when they do just a one-off presentation in front of a class. And there's the production values. So uh, lighting, framing, um, uh, sound quality, that uh, all those aspects are, um, um, are in there. And again, it's not about having the best possible uh, production going in the studio to record presentation. It's about thinking about those core values, core production values that can be implemented um, anywhere at any time. So, uh, and also we support uh, lectures by giving them a uh, template, if you want, for the, uh, uh, the, the Dropbox on the VLE. And that includes a link to the guide and uh, some very short explanations and um, how to um, introduce on the, uh, um, on the page of the assessment Dropbox. Okay, time is flying past. 
So, uh, but just another quick snapshot of the Office for Digital Learning uh, SharePoint site, where we have a whole lot of uh, short videos, three minutes maximum on how to do a lot of different things with regard to, to videos. So um, there's about 12 videos there that really cover all of the aspects of, uh, of creating videos. The last thing that I want to talk about, and that's another ePortfolio solution. So uh, I've, as a lecturer, um, has always been very frustrated with portfolio. As a student, I've been frustrated with uh, portfolio solutions, finding them clunky and uh, not easy to use and not very creative. So um, coming from a creative background, I always was really keen to find a solution uh, to that. And uh, that came through in the form of Campus Press, which uh, I was really lucky to get the support to introduce as a pilot. And uh, we are now getting a institutional license. We went from a pilot of 80 students to this year having 600 students using it to at least double that next year. And um, so we introduced that before the pandemic. And the idea was to give the license to students to create something that is visual, that is uh, personalized, and also that gives them the skills to um, create their own website when they leave the university, where they, where they can showcase their work um, when they look for employment. So that was achieved uh, with Campus Press, which is a WordPress platform, but gives a layer of um, uh, educational functionality, such as class, class blogs, where blogs are aggregated. So each student has a blog, and that creates a bubble of blogs uh, within which students uh, can, uh, uh, what that can be, uh, there's lots of different privacy settings, but blogs can be fully open to the world and indexed by Google, so uh, anybody can see them to you being fully private, so within a class, and nobody can see each other's blog. Uh, what I find is people tend to, to want their blogs to be totally open, and uh, that creates real opportunity for peer learning where students go and watch each other's design, each other's research, each other's pictures, and comment on uh, each other's blog posts. And um, uh, so we spot that through helping uh, lectures batch create their, uh, their blogs for their students, invitations to um, uh, to uh, training for the, uh, for the students and for the lecturing staff. And uh, the uptake and the results have been really, really great and mostly popular in art and design. This is where I first made contact and said, hey, I think that would uh, really work for you guys. And um, we have more pockets of um, different uh, uh, areas of the university who are interested in using that. And that's really pretty much it. I um, <laughs> went over the time, but I hope it wasn't too long. So um, I would be really happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you very much, Antoine, and uh, very thought provoking. Uh, Okay, well, we'll, we have a small number of people here with us today, so I'll invite uh, um, any, any comments and questions. Kenji's looking as if he's going to burst into a question. Um, if I can, absolutely. Um, I think, well, Walter wanted to ask a question as well. So I, I just, I'm quickly going to read from uh, the chat because he sent me a private message. He said uh, he's, he's gutted that he had to leave, but he wanted to ask, if Ulster uses Panopto for other purposes as well, um, okay. more traditional lecture capture, yeah. the flipped classroom approaches. Yes. So um, originally, uh, Panopto was there for to enable lecture capture. Uh, as an institution, uh, we never pushed lecture capture, and um, because the ethos is active learning and we want students to come and to participate into class and we don't want students to uh, come to class 
as a um, uh, just a, a consumer of knowledge. <laughs> so uh, it, it, that that was that. Uh, that was a really good premise. So uh, flip learning uh, was the uh, uh, one of the reasons why we were pushing Panopto. And we did, uh, within the Office of Digital Learning, did a lot of work on flip learning and on trying to encourage staff to experiment with it. Uh, but the... Um, uh, so th those were the reason why it was there. There always has been some um, uh, lecture capture, but not a lot. And certainly it was the lecture who needed to request uh, the lecture capture to take place. It wasn't, uh, um, it, 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 it wasn't something that <clears throat> was, was prescribed. Um, and uh, when Panopto was introduced, I was curious and intrigued by the video submission uh, capabilities and um, and it really took it from there and uh, find some uh, pockets of practice in the university who are interested in it and who I was able to uh, convinced that it would work for their students, um, students who um, um, may benefit from uh, the uh, ability to experiment with their presentation styles and uh, improve their presentation skills and uh, did a little bit of research, did stu um, uh, study with students. And um, uh, that uh, was the trigger for the uh, students' guides to video assessment. Uh, which we also have um, assessed quite thoroughly with students um, and co-created with students. And, um, um, and it, it, it was, uh, um, so it, it wasn't, uh, it's something that kind of evolved if you want. And then with remote learning, it was, hey, we've got this package and we've got this solution. You definitely want to think about this and uh, Panopto usage and especially the video assessment uh, has just like, completely exploded, uh, which is great to see. Um, and it's not without its problem, but uh, it's definitely um, provided a solution to a problem that nobody foresaw would, um, uh, would present itself. So that was great. And, and just my own question, just very quickly, then yeah. is I'm, I'm really excited by the idea of video assessment and the fact that students can record a piece, but then have the opportunity to review, judge whether or not it's up to the quality that they want it to be, and mm. then redo it until they're happy with it so they can submit. Now, obviously, that can happen when you're writing an essay or an assignment, too. But I, I suppose the, the ability to watch yourself back is, is really the key factor there. What I want to ask is, how do you give students the tool to evaluate their performance? How do they understand the criteria against which they're being judged? And mm. how do they know where to make improvements? Yeah, so I guess um, that's where the rubric comes in. and But also through providing students with examples um, of um, uh, prior uh, or examples of uh, good presentations or not so good presentation and, and what can be improved in that. But I think mostly um, most students nowadays um, have a good idea of what it is, of, of what a uh, engaging presentation or piece of video is like. Um, and through various, um, uh, for various reasons. Uh, but, um, and, and we see that coming through. Uh, we did a uh, pilot for vlogs, again, students on, um, uh, on placements. And the quality of, and that was early on, so very little support for them. And the quality that came back was astounding. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the sense of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, how genuine 
the students were when they were talking about their placement and their experience and, uh, and what they'd learned was uh, and, and how comfortable they were with this um, and with sharing this when we asked to the class okay this was really good we want to um, uh, showcase this is uh, is it okay to share the video and do all of the uh, um, everything around that everybody was fine and i think that surprised a lot of people um uh, of the maybe older generations uh, um, people students weren't so part, particular about people um the wide audience in their videos thank you very much for that um, we've come up to just about the half hour now, and so um, I will give my thanks to Antoine for triggering our thought around assessment and different ways in which it can be approached. Um, if you'd like to join a live virtual bridge session, then have a look at our programme page and hope you can join us in the near future. Take care.